the whole Amalak, all Amalamak, the whole Amalak, Yami, Rakis, the whole Agadol, Macarian Tales, the whole Eronai, the whole Elohim, Curios Tios Panta Greta, Curios Tios Pestos, Elda at Ehova. El Emna Yehova Ibas Leon Kurios Otios O Pantacorrector Baslios Baslion Kai Kurios Kurios Yehova Dabar Halal Elohim Dabar Halal Yehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura El Elohim Israel Jesus Christos Ton Christon is in ton Kurion. Kurion in Mahagion Panta Greta, Gadol Gadol, Kepura. Yehova Ishmalka, Yehova Shamba. Yel Nakum Yehova, El Nakum Yapa. Netzak Israel, La Sheker, Gava Gava. Triembos Yehova. Jesus Christos, Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebra. Mora Rosh Nasa, Elohim Elohim. Ille Ilai Shalot, Yehova Malak. Yehova Malak, Olam Olam Ad. Yehova Elohino, Yehova Ekad, Gadol Gadol, Gebra. Zaan Logan Oga Tautios Dulas Desmios Despotes Dikayesune and Jesus Christos Kurion 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 Hagion 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 Numa Pantacreta Gadol Gadol Gebuda Derek Emunabaka Meshvat Shah the Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and ignorant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the fellowship of Lord God the Lord. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing the direct result of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will be the impact of your eternal life as well. The way how we grieve, squelch, wax, lie and resist to Lord God, the Holy Spirit on this earth. The way how we are indifferent towards Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The way how you have dealt with Lord God, the Holy Spirit will be the same impact for you in the heaven as we were able to look right now on this earth when you lie to Lord God the Holy Spirit as Anani and Sapphira they faced instant death no chance of getting into the eternity the same thing for us as well the way how we are going to deal in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit is what the word says in 2nd Samuel chapter 22 in verse number 41 and 42 
They cried unto the Lord God for help, but he did not turn out to them. And I turned back and powdered them to be the dust of the feet. And what did they cry out? Matthew chapter 7, Luke chapter 13. Crying out to say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? But God the Father did not say that I know you, but he said rather in return, I know you not who you are. Workers of iniquity depart from me. So that will be the direct result if you have been out of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So, in this great and unique dispensation of the church age, if we could look and learn from nature, every bird or animal, or in fact indeed the tree, they go to produce the maximum output of their growth. They don't stop. They full grow out and they full try to yield the fruit. Then now in the church age for every believer, they have been given the power and the things pertaining to Lord God the Holy Spirit. So that in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, they can grow up to the full potential. They can grow up to the full potential and that is to conform to the image of Christ. But man on his part, he is not able to grow up to the full potential of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But rather, in return, man is able to simply die sin unto death. So, dear brethren, the direct proportionate or the result of your fellowship in the ministering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is your life. If you have been led by the Spirit of God, being witnessed by the Spirit of God that you are the children of Most High, you will be surely taken to be the adult sons of His glory. It is a direct result of your fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The way how you deal with it is your happiness or misery. You grieve and squelch and wax and lie and resist the Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The misery for you on this earth and your body goes on to deteriorate. Every day morning or evening or full day you try to blaspheme the Lord God. Night by night your soul weeps. So better use the privacy of your priesthood. Get back to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Learn the word of Lord God from the original language of the scriptures. Be a witness for it, because every believer has been called looking upon the time to become caterer of Bible doctrine. And as we read the passage from Isaiah chapter 51, verses 17 and 18, the heavens, the breeze of the heavens, or the breath of the heavens, should be placed in the fields of the earth or the plantings or the teachings of the heaven should be in the standards of this earth. How? When he considers Adam to be the man being made out of the dust of the soil, the way how he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, so the word of Lord God is that breath. And Adam, the way how he is from the dust of the soil, the unbelievers who they are. And to them you have to breathe the word of God, where you are called to be the light of the earth and salt of the earth. Therefore every believer has been called to open up his mouth as divine oracles. And he has to breathe into the nostrils of unbelievers the living word of God. And that's what a real duty is. And that's not possible if you're not with the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So, dear brother, get into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins. Your direct proportionate results, the way how we deal with Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If you're walking out of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, on this earth, misery in eternity, destruction. If you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the very first thing what Lord God, the Holy Spirit would do, will search all the truth and guide you to become the word of truth to this people. So, dear brother, 
Here's the privacy of a priest to confess your sin to rebound. Now let's come back and learn what God the Father has prepared and kept for us. On today's date, in eternity past, to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of the Lord to learn the truth. The things what are prepared and kept for us on today's date in it will pass to the praise of your glory. Sovereign Lord, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. Being in the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in this church age, every believer, they had to wake up to the point if they are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then for sure there will be no peace, there will be no prosperity. As your soul prospers in the Word of God, so you shall prosper in many things on this earth. There will be no righteousness. So first of all, we need to make sure that we are prospering in the Word of God. If we are not prospering in the Lord's mind, in the word of Lord God, then it is the direct result that we are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And the enemies will come out with their concepts, with their thoughts, with their viewpoint. But there is nothing greater on this earth than the word of God. What we find for us to say in Isaiah chapter 40 verses 6 through 8. Or the same passage, what First Peter chapter 1 verse 23 and 24 emphasizes. Though heaven and the earth will vanish off, his word will abide forever, and all men are grass, they just fade away. The wisdom of men, what it is? It is absolute vanity. The things what he has inculcated, the things what he has formulated, because Christ our Lord our God is the end of all human wisdom. And therefore, here in this passage, what we're going to read from 2 Samuel chapter 22, we have a lot many lessons to learn. Beginning with verse number 40. You have gridded me with strength. And the word gridded, we read what it is. You have prepared me for any pressure of this life. You have been day by day inculcating to me the valuable lessons of the knowledge of Bible doctrine. On in return, I thought they were as the sufferings which I have gone through. But Lord, you have been preparing me for your battles on this earth. You know, whenever you get sufferings or whenever you get your trials and persecutions, count it all joy, as James could say. Because God the Father is preparing you with strength for his battle. The greater the pressure, the greater the things pertaining to your life, because the last enemy what Job had was his own wife, putting him in constant pressure. So even the last enemy what Satan kept was his own wife. But then to Job did not fail. He waited upon the Lord God to guide him. And he calls her, don't talk like a foolish woman. You know, Satan knows very well, putting all the pressures from all the angles, if the man is able to still sustain, the way how Adam left with Eve, thinking that she is more honorable and pleasurable than God, Satan always uses the last weapon for you to be your own wife. But Job did not fall for such temptation. Job said, don't talk like a foolish woman. The way I have I entered in enjoying in my life with all the blessings of God. Now I'm much more happy to enter into his sufferings because his sufferings will prepare him for the Lord's battle. That's how he's going to greet us. And count it all joy when you get your trials, your temptations, your persecutions. Why? Because God the Father has seemed you fit to tempt you, to test you. So that against any pressure you're going to increase your strength. And in that pressure, when you're going to increase in your strength, you can fight the Lord's battle. He's going to prepare you for his battle, gridding up your lions. 
That's what he said first in Ephesians chapter 6 when you put upon the entire panoply of God. The very first thing what you put, he says, grid up with truth, the belt of truth, the lions with your truth. Because already enemies have come up. They're going to come up with their talks, they're going to come up with their inventions, they're going to talk about the standards of the life or the wisdom what they can gain. But there could be no greater wisdom than Christ. Because Christ, our Lord of our God, alone said, I am the bread of life. If you're living on this earth, it is His word that you're able to live. And there is no true life in you if you're not able to find the real emphasis of you. As He said in John chapter 6, labor for the food which perisheth not. You don't partake in the elements of Lord God the Father. There is no life in you, He said. Christ our Lord of God is the bread of life. Christ our Lord of God is the end of all human wisdom. That's it, dear brother. That's very, very simple. Christ our Lord of God is the end of all human wisdom. You know, people may not understand about these things. Because men think their wisdom is great. And all the time they love to say, we are in this, we are in that. It's absolutely fine and brilliant and great to know that they are in that and they are in this. Or such and such achievements, what they might have found. But what's life after death? Your carelessness on this earth can be excused. Breaking out your umbrella, forgetting out your umbrella, letting go some water over, over the taps. Or driving out your signals so that you can be again paying back your fine. Or jumping out your signals. Such carelessness can be corrected, but how can you escape if you ignore such a great salvation, says Hebrews chapter 2. Either you're going to end up in heaven or hell. If you're careless now, and people are happy to correct themselves, saying that we have achieved this, we have achieved that. And they're talking in the terms of the world so that they're thinking that this is the viewpoint of life and this can be the great achievement what they have got. And what is that achievement they think they are going, they've got? Saying that we have learned the ways of truth or we have learned the ways of peace. We have learned the ways of prosperity. We have learned the ways of being good to each other or to say we have learned the ways of peace. But no peace, said the Lord God, unto the wicked. Then who is the wicked? Anyone who doesn't believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That he is the bread of life. He is the light of the world. He is the eternal God. Because Christ, our Lord of God, is the plausious riches of wisdom and knowledge. He is such a great one for us. Such a great one for us in Christ. But we, the church age believers, being not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, neither growing up to our full potential in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, we are still walking like milk oriented believers, if they are milk oriented believers. As Apostle Paul could say in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, in verse number 1 to 3, Brethren, I couldn't talk to you as adult ones who could enjoy the meat, but I spoke to you like the milk-oriented ones. They were not capable of understanding great doctrine. The same thing what he said in First Corinthians, this I speak for your shame. Some don't have the knowledge of Christ. Because if you have been grown up to the full potential in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, though your enemy like a roaring lion may come with various schemes of inventions to say, this is their doctrine or this is their way of thinking. What Jeremiah calls in chapter number 7, while the time when Jeremiah was present, when they had the false prophets coming up with the standards of the teachings, he said, the doctrine is a stock of vanities. That's very simple. The doctrine is a stock of vanities. You know what a stupid way of thinking it is when the people are thinking that we're able to get this, we have done this, we have done that. No, dear brother, when you haven't done anything else. Christ, our Lord of our God, has given to us His revolution, to use the word. He has given us His manual, how a man can get back to home. He created man in his own image, breathed into his breath. 
his nostrils the breath of life plural it is not singular the soul and the spirit gets activated and when men sin the spirit got dead so the solution for spirit to be born again not the fig leaves as the religion people think doing good works we can get back into heaven no there should be shedding of the blood and therefore Christ our Lord of God is the ultimate sacrifice for every human being on the face of the earth though he was not sin was made sin on behalf of us so that we might have the righteousness of Christ created to our account so that you can learn in Romans chapter 6 emphasizing the point the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord because all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God in Acts chapter 4, in verse number 12, we read, None of the salvation for you on this earth to be given, for your mankind to be saved, either in the heaven or on the earth. What is that name? Apart from the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, we say in Acts 16.31, Pisis so pithian carry and kaise te se son. Believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Christ, our Lord of a God, is the only way, the truth and the life. He is the only preeminent one, the one who look in Colossians chapter 1, the way how he goes on to describe about his existence. And before him all knees shall bow, every tongue shall confess, he has been exalted above any other name, Philippians chapter 2. And mankind on the earth, he goes to think he will be far better, far superior than Christ on this earth. He goes to invent his methods, his schemes, his inventions. And he thinks that he can be something better like the fig leaves tying up to his nakedness to be covered rather than the shedding of the blood. And then he says, when Lord God the Father appears, where are you, Adam? He says, Lord, I am naked, do not come to me. He forgets about the fig leaves. You know, man is living such a lie life because Satan has blinded their eyes not to believe the true gospel of Christ. And the true gospel of Christ has not been shined through us as believers in the Lord God. Like the way how Isaiah claims in chapter number 6, I am a man of unclean lips, woe unto me, I live in the midst of these unclean people. Because he, up until now he is not able to fully declare the glory of God, that is, the full potential use of the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore he says, I am a man of unclean lips. I live in the midst of the people of unclean lips, the people who don't love Bible doctrine, the people who don't have interest to learn the word of God in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, the people who have failed solid exegesis, the people who have failed to upon or to take upon or to look upon word by word line by line precept upon precept iota upon iota and carrier upon carrier the people who have completely forgotten the real burden through the word of god which they have to preach and teach every day these are the people who have lost to have forgotten it and that will be a great pain in the sight of lord god the father because constantly they're coming to say they knew Lord, but they don't know my Lord God at all. If they would have known my Lord God, they would have completely taught the word of Lord God in the process what the Bible demands, which is called to be word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, carrier upon carrier. That is lost in our pulpits, and we are in return saying to the world, we are Christians, but in reality we are no way concerned to be Christians in the Lord. That's why the name of my Christ has been blasphemed. Because you are living in the midst of such people where they don't demand the word of God. With great authority they should ask every day Bible doctrine. That's what the life is all about. Every day they should be associated with the word of Lord God. Every day they should look upon and think upon the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Every day they should look. With demand you should ask to the pastor teacher, Lord, make this pastor to teach us the word of Lord God every day accurately. Give him that grace, give him that wisdom, give him that knowledge. 
so that the complete word of Lord God could be taught. In spite of all these things, he has ample of pressure in his life. Lord, give him that gracious grace to teach your word accurately. That's what your prayer should be to the pastor. But no full potential use of Lord God, the Holy Spirit today for you. You haven't been able to take the full potential use. You haven't given maximum of your care for the full potential use of Bible doctrine in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we find people are not able to even look upon the principle of Isaiah chapter 6 and understand we are residing in the midst of such unclean people. The people who are not having doctrine to be number one priority, but rather people are having for the lustful patterns of the old sin nature the number one priority. Envy, jealousy, backbiting. Therefore, he writes over there in Galatians chapter 4 that I couldn't find the like-minded people concerning to this ministry as this man was. Why? Because we have to be the like-minded ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in spreading the pale wonders of His glory to this people because we have now the polypiclus wisdom of God in this church age, which we have to teach, which we have to train, which we have to tell. And if you are not telling the polypiclus wisdom of God, we are really making up our lives and havoc. That's what the mystery doctrine is all about. Ephesians chapter 3. Now, to the principalities, the powers, the rulers and authorities, the things pertaining to the polypiclus wisdom of Christ in the church age has to be made known right now through the church. Therefore, I have been given the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to use it to the full potential. The use of the full potential of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will result the earth to be filled with the glory of God. By that we meant to say what every believer will be conforming to the image of Christ. Every believer will come to realize that they have been predestined to the knowledge of Christ. That's what every believer will be in the Lord. Every believer. That's what his real potential is all about. Every believer will come, will conform to the image of Christ if he's been fully in the potential of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But Satan comes in such a way that they don't believe the completed can of scripture, spiritual gifts. They still believe in the temporary spiritual gifts. The way how Satan knows very well to trample you out because when you're growing up to the confirmation of the image of Christ, you can easily trample down Satan under your feet. Therefore, what does Satan do? It tries to make you to believe still the temporary spiritual gifts. Up to what extent it makes you to believe that you still love to run behind of the Holy Spirit of God to say you are a miracle one healers. You are a healing one healers. You are such a one in talking tongues, talk, talk in tongues and make these people to believe. So they're still running in the temporary spiritual gifts and they're not able to realize or learn we are now in the completed can of scripture. It is no longer we walk in the temporary spiritual gifts, but we have to be in the permanency of the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts. What are the permanent spiritual gifts? The bona fide work of the pastor teacher, the first one to teach the word of Lord God accurately. The work of an evangelism to teach it accurately. These are the works of the temporary spiritual gifts, what we have now in Christ. But people are operating in the temporary spiritual gifts rather than operating in the permanence of the spiritual gifts and make each and every believer perfect and complete in all wisdom. Colossians chapter 1 verses 24 to 29. And pastors are so happy to spend their time contrary to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And they think they are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But Lord God, the Father, is so gracious unto them that he has not taken an action like Perez Uzziah, neither he has taken an action like the crowd of Bethsheshem, but rather he is going to still give you the grace to say, with a willing heart he is not afflicting you. If not, who would stand in his presence? No one can stand. He gives to overcome a chance of your ignorance. 
so that we could serve him in spirit and in biblical truth. Have Leviticus chapter 4 emphasizes seven times he goes to pour down, sprinkle that blood upon the whale. Seven times reading the Bible and at least once writing the Bible. That's what your true qualification is in this church church to serve my Christ. But how many ministers have read the Bible at least once upon their knees in the entire life of ministry? What they do, proclaiming and claiming they have done 40 years of ministry, they have done 50 years of ministry, they have done 60 years of ministry. But at least once they might have not read Bible kneeling down in the presence of Lord God. And you may ask, what is the importance of kneeling down and reading the Bible? Why not by just sitting or standing? You look in the presence of all the prophets, the way how they have experienced, even the book of Revolution, Apostle John. He knelt down in his presence. Automatically, your knees will kneel down in the presence of Lord God the Father because such a great experience you will find of Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 11 because every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess we cannot stand in his presence we are not even worthy the only solution is kneel down therefore you have his Bible now just don't think it's a copy of a book it's a Bible wherewith if you could look back in the original Hebrew Greek and Aramaic you will realize every iota and carrera no matter from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 20 how many of the best of the best they may try to read and, look and try to look and say we have done with the Bible they would really say we have yet not even taken one single drop from the big ocean of the Bible because it is unlimited the thoughts are unlimited the doctrine is unlimited the words of the Lord of a God in the original Hebrew Greek and Aramaic are ultimately superb man fails in the research of the Word of God we have so many things to learn over here. It is purely by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, where we come to learn and live as per the demands of Bible doctrine. It is purely the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that we have such life. And it is purely the desire of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to train every believer to eat strong meat. So that sooner the better you can conform to the image of Christ because you have come to look upon the simple example. You have bought all your raw materials and then if you are not able to cook that food, when your hunger will go. First you have to get them, clean them and then cook them. Afterwards you have to give thanks to the Lord for that and after your prayer you have to eat. Then your hunger is gone. Till that time, though you may think, I have bought all the raw materials, your hunger is gone. That's what today churches are trying to teach. Come to the church weekly once, it's enough. You are believed, believed in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it's enough. But your hunger to reach your eternity, your hunger to make up your name, conform to the image of Christ, or, be, or becoming to, to look upon to say your name is, book, is in the book of life, that hunger still remains as a hunger. You know why it still remains like a hunger? Because first of all, after believing in Christ, it is just as to say you have now bought all the raw materials. Now you need to clean them and you need to cook them. Cleaning is discerning the thoughts, the thoughts between the milk-oriented category, the thoughts between the adult-oriented category, the thoughts between strong meat-oriented category. This was this is what every believer should know. As a born newborn babies desire the sincere milk of God, and then the bread of the word of Lord God, where it is your life now. From there you say, I need to learn the word of Lord God, and that word of Lord God will be your life. And from there on, now Hebrews 5.14, you let go the basic fundamentals and you come to reach maturity, maturity, because they that are still drinking milk, they cannot handle the pure word of God. So dear brethren, here we look and understand up to what extent such maturity has been there for us. So after you bought your raw materials, it doesn't mean to say I've been qualified. You need to now cook after cleaning it. Cleaning is discerning process. That which is good, you put that which is bad, you throw it out. And that bad which you throw it out is what your practice is on this earth. Contrary to the Spirit of God. 
If the Bible says every day carry your cross and come to Christ and look upon the word of Lord God, and if you're not able to make it up, it's a bad thing, so you throw it out. If it is a good thing, you're able to practice it every day under any pressure of this life. Then simply follow it. Keep it up with you. That's how you discern. I wish God the Father would have kept that spirit. Discernment of the spirit, that spiritual gift would have been among us. As people can realize today and understand, if anyone would have that spirit of gift, before the composition of the canon of scripture, what they would have. If a new preacher or some other idiot who comes to talk about the word of God in the pulpit today, because now Pentecostal people will call Pentecostal people, Baptist will call Baptist, uh, the things pertaining to their respective denominations, they call them, because they don't want to introduce to them the truth. They just want to make them to propagate their lies. They would simply call them and invite them and they say, we have got a good preachers for us. You know, in the past, before the completion of the canon of scripture, the discernment of the spirits, Numa Crine, what the spirit of the gift was, in the temporal spiritual gifts which has been taken out, the one who come to preach to the church, the man who has that gift, he has to be surely an adult man, a man who has been well grown up in the scriptures. Such a one will have that gift. And this man would tell after the preaching work has been done by the new person who has come to the pulpit, he would simply stand and he would tell this doctrine you can accept or reject. If it is true, he would say, yes, it is good and correct, you can accept it. If it is false, he would say, this is not in line with the scriptures, simply discard it. That's the discernment of the spirit. I wish that discernment of the Spirit would have been now for each and every believer in operation. You have something greater than that. You have the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, cannot be in operation until and unless you first grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Until and unless you grow up in the doctrine of the Word of Lord God, you cannot have the discernment of the Spirit. If you are still like a baby, you will, toss for, for, you will toss to and fro for every slide of doctrine, as Ephesians chapter 4 emphasizes, and will accept that to be the truth. Every wind of doctrine that comes, you just toss to and fro. You will simply accept that to be the truth. You will not realize nor understand that you are still baby. Every knucklehead would come and would tell some of the things that are pertaining to this life and they would ask you for an altar call and they would say, what are your troubles? They would ask you, what are the needs for your prayers? <coughs> they would ask you, what are your uh, sicknesses? And they would give you their oil, they would give you their kerchief. And people would say, by faith we took that, we have been healed, we have been surviving, we have a good family now. And the people also love to look at the end of the day, let's have peace, let's have happiness, let's have things that which are not able to disturb our harmony together. So what they do, they follow such and such ministry and the pastor would say, you sow to our ministry so that you can get some great benefits. If the mother-in-law can sponsor one program, the sister-in-law, if you want to have double peace, then the mother-in-law sponsor to us twice the program what your mother-in-law sponsored. And such is the way today the word of Lord God has been blasphemed by the so-called pastors in our pulpits. And I wish the mentoring minister of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would have continued the gift of discernment of the Spirit, which has been seized after the completion of the canon scripture, what we have now. And today every believer should possess that gift, because many false teachings have entered into our pulpit. As we read in 1 John chapter 4, already emphasizing the point, many false teachers have already entered in, many false men. You can clearly understand up to what extent such false men have entered into our pulpits. This man, they don't discern what is right or evil. 
They have come to the extent of the belly. They have come to survive in this ministry. They haven't come to make the name of my Lord God to be made known. If every believer would come to the spot, to the point of reaching maturity, the word what we can say of Colossians 1, 28 and 29, in all wisdom and in all understanding, what is the right work of the pastor teacher to do there, then the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Lord God hasn't left out with a help for us or he has left out with an option for us. He has provided the full potential for every believer as the tree could grow up to its full growth. The animal, though it may or though it may have four legs or look upon the small bird as he compares that to two sparrows, having to that small bird, having two little thin legs, how it would try to balance itself and is about to land, how it would be able to take care of its entire weight of the body, little sparrows. How they can manage, they have grown up to the full potential, how they fight for the life, how they fight for the progeny, how they fight to protect their nest, how intelligent they are. They have come up to the full potential of their growth. But we are not growing up to the full potential of the Word of God. That's the great problem for us. Because we are not able to grow up to the full potential of the word of Lord God. The reason is very simple. We are not in the complete harmony fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And God the Father is not able to grid you up. He is not able to train you up for pressures. Because you thought that having pressure upon your blood is more. I read the word in Isaiah, in, in Job 42, verse number 6. I abhor myself having pressure upon your head. But God the Father intention is just that not have pressure upon your head. But in, in return, having you to train so that you can be tension free. By that we meant to say no pressure upon your head. He is strengthening your mind. Therefore, Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3 emphasizes, we are no longer conforming to the world, but renovating the standards of our thinking as per the demands of Bible doctrine. That's what our life is. Do not conform to the world. What happens if you are able to conform to the world? You are going to die, isn't it? Therefore, we have been told, do not conform to the world, but rather renovate the standards of your thinking. That's what God the Father wants to grid up upon every believer's life. Don't just think pressure upon your blood is the solution. To get ease of that pressure, you go to your doctors. No, have your mental pressure first. Be renovated in the standards of the thinking. The world will say no. The world will say many things, but you are prepared very well in your mental mind so that you can fight your enemies, so that it has been called for us to have the same mind which was in the mind of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are called to fight the Lord's battle. We are called to do the will of Lord God the Father, having to grow up full potential in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. But where is the fruit of light? Where is the fruit of spirit? Where is the full potential growth of Lord God the Holy Spirit? People may think the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit is to talk in tongues or miracles or healings or XYZ, but they are completely we forgot the principle of John chapter 14, which emphasizes through 14 through 16 chapters, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is to guide you into all the truth, nothing but the truth. The things which I have spoken, you might have forgotten, to get back into remembrance, that's what Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will do, which you haven't learned, which you haven't known by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. How can you get back to your remembrance? You cannot, which you haven't learned. Therefore, the four qualities, what he claims in Deuteronomy chapter 10. Such sort of a great Lord of a God, what we're going to serve him. He says over here in verse number 21, or 20, 20. First he said, you shall fear the Lord thy God. That is, make sure you're not going to give a blasphemy for his name on this earth. The full potential as the tree can grow up. The full potential what an animal or a bird can defend. 
the same thing the full potential not to make the name of my Lord God to be blasphemed on this earth you show up your full potential of your growth because greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world if you have that full potential of Lord God the Holy Spirit controlling and indwelling in you and leading you you will fear no enemy but rather you will trample down Satan under your feet you know why we fear because we fail to expose the deeds in the light because the deeds of us are revealed he said in John 3 19 Though the light has shined in the world, people are not able to witness to that light because the deeds of you are evil. Therefore, we are not able to make up to stand to the full potential of His Word. But the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is to give the full potential. That's what our life is, to give full potential. If you are not able to give up the full potential, then surely, dear brethren, we are the fools. We are still grieving and squelching and waxing and lying and resisting to Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The way how we fail to give Him the full potential, the way we are acquiring full potential of misery in our life. And you still go to search for peace, you still go to search for happiness, you still go to search for many, many stupid things on the face of the earth. But the Bible calls, it is not the full potential. Because man thinketh this is the full potential, but the Bible calls, that is not the full potential. Where you get your full potential? Come to Christ. He is the full potential. He is the only one who is capable of giving you the true life. He is the only one who is capable of showing you the true purpose of this life. He alone can give you that full potential because what peace he has, no one can give you on the face of the earth. Such a full potential he has in him and you need to come and get it. But since you fail to give full potential, you really are not going to fear the Lord my God. That's what we find over here when he said in this great chapter of Deuteronomy 10, you shall fear the first one. Give him great fear and reverence on this earth. You shall fear the Lord thy God. When you fear, that makes you what you're going to serve. The first thing, when you get all your raw materials, you clean it, then what you're going to do, you cannot soak it and keep for two to three days in the same procedure of your water because the fruits or the vegetables will get rotten. So when you have cleansed it, what you will do now? You are ready to cook. The same thing over here. First, when you have fear to the Lord God, you will serve Him. And the word so over here, dear brethren, you will be a witness. The Hebrew word called to be Abba. The strong code number 5647 meant to say what? You are performing a work by obligation, requirement or gratitude. The three things, obligation, requirement or gratitude. Because your viewpoint of life and your body will get every part into captivity for Christ. Therefore, you are going to be a witness for such truth. Such an obligation, such a requirement, such a standard of what you can call gratitude, which you need to pay. We have to be so much gratitude to the Lord our God for choosing us and giving us the chance to be with Him forever in the presence of Lord God the Father by faith alone in Christ alone so that you can work out in fear and trembling the salvation pertaining to the Lord our God so that you can show forth that gratitude to the Lord. We don't deserve it as the unbelievers are perishing without knowing Christ. You don't deserve to perish. Therefore, God in His gracious plan separated you from the mother's womb as Ephesians 1, 4 emphasizes. And He has given you this chance to serve Him. But how? Without having fear, you cannot serve Him. True respect is fear to the Lord God. Fearing and obeying his mandates, people may think we cannot fear. You know why you need to fear the Lord God? To show that true respect to serve him. Because if you are not fearing, you will for sure not respect his commandments. In fear and in love, you show his respect to his commandments. If you love the Lord of a God, you show his respect to his commandments. Because the name of my Christ shall not be blasphemed. 
The name of my living Lord our God shall not be blasphemed. Therefore you take all your time to be present in the presence of Lord God the Father to fear his commandments first. In order to fear his commandments, we need to know what are his commandments. In order to know what are his commandments, we have to first make up a decision to burn out all the bridges that are hindering us not to know the word of God. For 24 hours, you know the way how we read, Judas Iscariot was able to sell my Christ for 30 pieces of silver. In these 24 hours, what for you are selling my Christ today? Are you selling my Christ to visit other country? Are you selling my Christ today because of some great business deal? Are you selling my Christ for the stupidity of this life that is what you can call the lust of flesh the lust of fire the pride of life for what for you selling Christ today are you selling my Christ for the lusts of your roles in nature what for you selling every day your potential work is to first gather in the word of the Lord First, fear to learn his commandments. If you don't fear, you cannot serve him. But Christ, our Lord of our God, said, They that serve him must serve him in spirit and in biblical truth. What is that worship or what is that word, what we can call for the standards of proskune in the presence of Lord God the Father? First, truth in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. That is the real potential work of Lord God the Holy Spirit to train you up in the truth, the truth, the truth, so that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Having to know the full potential, for example, you know how to have the full potential of a gun or your bike or your car or the things pertaining to that particular medicine or whatever material which you're using your smartphone also what is the capacity of that uh, a battery or whatever how much you can use it or where you can use it in the water or above the water in the moon or outside the moon you know all these things which you love to look first first you know that potential that is called to be the knowledge and then you love to apply it that is called to be the wisdom you cannot serve him if you don't have the knowledge. You have a gun in your hand, you don't know how to operate it, then how you are going to make sure the right time to fire it up or to use it? So first thing you need to know that knowledge. And people don't differentiate today between what is knowledge and wisdom. The full potential first you should know. The power of that, the limits of that, the fatigue test of that, the endurance test of that. The same thing first you should know to fear Lord God on this earth, his mandates. Where do they abide? How do they abide? What do they abide? This mandates is what first you should know it. Then you can serve him. That's what the point I want to tell. You know how to operate the gun, then when to fire it, you can use your wisdom. But if you don't know how to operate your gun, how can you fire it? When you don't know the full potential and the capacity of your bike, how can you use it? You know, some of the great companies, when they try to do to launch their products, the first thing, they will take a non-stop trial of riding the bike for 5,000 miles. Though it may cost 24 hours, it may change the drivers, but the bike will not stop. Like this Kawasaki company, which has goes to prove. We are talking about long back of around 1960s or 1980s issue, not now, not the present time, because now everyone are advanced in the technology. You can find those uh, videotapes in the YouTubes. They change the drivers. And they want to run the bike, the engine power, how much it will stop, or how much it will fail, or how much it will really stand good. For 5,000 miles, though there may be three drivers to change, fill in the gasoline, drive it, take the laps, 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 till it could reach 5,000 laps, or 5,000 miles. And in the meantime, the engine gets seized. Then once again, they're going to work out on that failure. And now that bike comes to the market for civilian hand. 
or for military purpose. The one who is using that bike, he will be instructed saying that this engine has been tested non-stop for 24 hours or 28 hours at a constant speed of such a rate. It has been driven for 5,000 miles. Then the one who is buying it, the one who is purchasing it, he will have full potential or such full knowledge to say the power of his bike, how much in emergency or what and what it is not, he can simply use it. You know, it's just an illustration what I'm telling, which is a practical one which has been done. The same thing if every believer would know what is the commandments of the Lord of God to be feared on this earth. And having to fear the commandments of the Lord of God, that the name of my Christ shall not be blasphemed at any cost. You know the way how Elijah contest in 1 Kings chapter 18 it emphasizes? The name of my living Lord God shall not be blasphemed. Therefore he goes to take that challenge. The same thing with David and Goliath. He goes to take that challenge. The challenge to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine, goes to curse my law. The challenge is my law. A blasphemy is the name of the living Lord God of hosts. The same thing in 1 Kings chapter 18, when we look upon that great challenge. If it is Lord God, let them serve. If it is Baal, let them serve. And people remain silent, you know, because they do not know the power and the potential of the power of God. So we cannot go to give a chance of blasphemy when we know full the commandments of the word of God. And that's why the churches are organized. That's why the pastor teachers have been given this bona fide gift. These are nothing but the one who would teach the word of Lord God. The sad part of today present Christendom is that they are thinking they are able to feed you with the strong meat. But in return they are not even able to show the smell of that meat for you. You know, if you can illustrate this, having to cook in India, for example, chicken and rice. The chicken has to be bought, it has to be, it has to be chopped, cleaned, and then it has to be cooked. That will become some sort of curry. That has to be mixed with the rice and then you're going to eat it. But if you have bought a chicken, it is alive though. You haven't cut it off, you haven't chopped it off, you haven't cleaned it off. You haven't cooked it off, but you just tie to a thread and hang it upside down before your eyes and having rice in your plate and if someone is coming and asking what is that you're eating and he would say to them this is chicken rice what I'm eating and the man would be shocked to know because you're eating only the plain rice but where is the chicken if you would ask you would show the point saying that the chicken is hanging down just look into the truck so I'm having the chicken and the rice in combination I'm eating chicken rice you know the man will go mad you know why he's deceiving you he's cheating you he's not actually eating the chicken rice he's showing you the chicken being hanged to a truck but the thing has to be actually cooked. Then you can say you're eating chicken rice or any other thing. But since this man is able to tie up the thread to a hanging one and he says to the person who's coming and asking, I'm eating chicken rice. Such has become the present Christendom today. The real word of Lord God, which they have to teach to the strong mate, they haven't been able to teach that. They are showing that they were able to teach, but in return, coming weekly once, it's as good as tying out the chicken to a thread hanging over down, so that you may think you're really eating the chicken for it. But in reality, you're eating only the rice. The potential of a man. You're simply eating out the rice. The same thing, if you don't know the commandments of the Lord of our God, you cannot serve Him. But God the Father cannot call you to serve Him until and unless first you would know His commandments. His commandments are not grievous to be obeyed as we read in 1 John chapter 3. His commandments can be obeyed, but they are not burdensome to be not obeyed. 
So, dear brethren, here we look. His commandments are not grievous for us. The same thing over here. First, knowing the commandments is what you're fearing the name of the Lord God not to be blasphemed. Then he will call to serve you. You know, I have a faithful wife or a faithful slave. When she's serving you faithfully, the very next thing is you make a bond of relationship with them. That's what happens over here, the third category of your growth. They'll be called to be the Desmios, the same thing what we can look, the Desmios was Barabbas over Christ, the people being hardened in their heart, the same thing what we look today. Rather than looking upon the word of Lord God, spending their time to learn the will of Lord God, people love to spend their time like Barabbas, notorious killer. They love to have Barabbas rather than Christ. And this Barabbas was a prisoner called to be Desmios. That's the meaning. The first thing, what you take, you know the fear and the commandments of the word of Lord God. Second, what you do, you come to enjoy, to serve in those commandments to Lord God. Third, you cleave, you become one flesh, you become the bark. That is called to be Desmios, prisoner in Christ, as Apostle Paul could say. I am the prisoner for Christ. So the third thing what happens, you're going to become the bark. Your every thought in your body from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun is joined to Christ. That's like a prisoner, desmios to the Lord. A joined to Christ. You know what a great thing it is we are losing out day by day. First, you don't know the commandments of the Lord God. You cannot serve Him. You may think you're serving Him, but you're not serving Him. If you're serving the Lord God, you'll become one with Him. That's the point called to be desmios, cleaving unto the way how wife and husband will become one flesh. They're no longer two, but one flesh. The same thing over here. God the Father is asking you to cleave unto Him, the bark. And who will be there? They will be the born slave. Rather than Desmios, this will be the people called to be like the word what we can call as the prisoners for Christ. That is what your real potential is all about. That's what your real work is all about, to be called in the Lord. Real potential for Christ. And we are simply letting go that real potential in the Lord. Apostle Paul alone could say, I'm prisoner for Christ. That is cleaving unto the Lord. That is the back unto the Lord. Therefore, the first thing what happens for you, you're going to know the commandments of the Lord of a God. The second thing, what will be the growth for you? You're going to become serving the Lord of a God as a witness about. The third thing, what will happen to you? You're going to cleave unto the Lord of a God. And then he said over here, the fourth one, he says, after the bark, you can swear by his name. That meant you can say that I know the Lord my God. The Hebrew word Shabbat, the song code number 7650, taking an oath meant to say what? Lord, I have read your Bible seven times. Lord, I have knelt and written the Bible seven times. That's the word Shabba meant to say oath. What is that oath? My every thought process in my body is fixed upon you, my Lord, your viewpoint, my Lord. That's Shabba, that's the oath. Making of your oath, taking of your oath. That's what you have been called. Take up your oath. That's what he said, swear by my, swear by his name, only when, when you know him, when you have walked by him, when you have been led by him, when you have been able to live your life according to the standards of his word, then you can swear by him. That's the reason he goes to greet us. That's the reason he goes to make us to go through the sufferings of Christ. 
because we can come back with the full potential in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. With full potential, we can fear the Lord God. With full potential, we can serve the Lord God. With full potential, we can cleave unto the Lord God. And with full potential, we can swear by the name of Lord God. Such a great Lord of a God we have for us. But today there is no word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, word by word, as we look upon iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera. People are perished. People have gone absolutely to the standards of stupidity on this earth. People are perished. Sowing to the wind, they're able to get worldwide. They don't know the meaning and the purpose of this life as well. You know here what he says in Second Samuel chapter 22. He greets us according to the Kazakh strength of his word for his battle. And then he says over here in verse number 41, You have greeted me with the strength to battle. Them that rose up against me I have subdued. The people who are crying out in the energy of the blood, I am just going to subdue them. How? The Hebrew word is called for subdue as kara. The strong code number 3766. What it is? I have subdued them because I have grown up like a scribe. My thinking and the viewpoint of life is absolutely kneeling down in the presence of you to become like a scribe. If you're not knelt down on your knees and write the word of Lord God, then you haven't subdued. How are you going to subdue? Only by making up the word of Lord God to be written upon your knees. Like a scribe you grow up. Your thinking, your viewpoint of life is absolutely brilliant like a scribe. That's how you're going to subdue. Therefore, he says now, Lord, you have given me the necks of my enemies. That is the viewpoint of life, the mouth and the thinking you have absolutely given to me. And whatsoever energy they had in their body, Lord, you have given me to that, so that I might destroy them. How are we going to destroy? You are going to exterminate them. How? Because we are in return able to face the pressures in our blood, because we have the authority of Christ, so that no matter what, we are going to endure the affliction in the Lord and go and make disciples of all the nations. That's how we are going to terminate them, destroy them. And the logic is very simple. How are we going to destroy them? In spite of any pressure, what it can go on to be upon your blood, you simply don't mind because you have the authority of Christ in you. Having the authority of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in us, we don't fear anyone. So we're going to destroy it. And then he said, all the people that they hate us, the way how they put pressure in a vigor and valor, we simply don't care them. And now we know what does he say? They looked, but there was none to say. You know, this passage is very, very important. He talks about the false pastor teachers tomorrow when they say, Lord, where weren't we dealing with you? Where weren't we prophesizing in your name? Where weren't we healing? Where weren't we with miracles? Where weren't we doing this, doing that? You know, therefore he says to them, they looked, but there was none to save. The same passage is what we can look in Matthew 7, 22 and 23, Luke 13, 25 and 26, because they thought they can be easily saved because they have done great work, but they haven't done the things pertaining to the will of God the Father. What is the will of Lord God the Father? Is to go and make disciples of all the nations. That they haven't done, that they haven't made it up. So what is going to do? He says that... This people cried unto the Lord God, who the enemies, who are the enemies, the people who are thinking that they are really for Christ, but these are the enemies of Christ to crucify God the Father because they are not using the full potential of Lord God the Holy Spirit to grow up. If they would have used the full potential of Lord God the Holy Spirit to be grown up, for sure they would have come to fulfill the marvelous glory of God the Father. But they haven't been using up for the full potential. So they cry out to God and God will not save them. 
The Lord God did not answer them because already he is answering us through his word. Therefore, the two-edged sword of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what we can look through his word, he says, I beat them out as small of the dust of the earth. I did stamp them as a mire of the street and did spread them abroad. The small dust of the earth, I have beaten them out. I have simply beaten them out as the small dust of the earth. So dear brother, no excuse at one end if the false teachers are rising up, having majority of the men to say they follow them, because God the Father is not going to save them, so what is our duty? Diminish their teachings, because they have diminished the word of God. We are here not to diminish the word of God, but to diminish the teachings of such false men who haven't come to take up the cross every day and who haven't come to become the will of Lord God the Father every day. So diminish their teachings, the teachings of false doctrines in the pulpits. So dear brother, Will you know the fear of Lord God? Will you come to serve my Lord God? Will you king and cleave unto my Lord God? Will you swear by the name of my Lord God? Many promises which have been left over haven't been claimed. Many doctrines which haven't been taught in our pulpits. Therefore, false men are rising. Therefore, our duty is to beat them as the dust of the earth. Because no matter what, the word of Lord God alone reigns forever and forever. No matter what, it is the only word of Lord God that reigns forever and forever. And if you haven't known the word of Lord God, for sure, dear brethren, you will be beaten by the enemy to the dust. Because first of all, ignorance of the scriptures, you're walking contrary to Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You're grieving and squelching and vexing and lying to Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And since you're ignorant of the scriptures, you're not growing up to the full potential. And Satan knows very well to toss because everyone should become like Apostle Paul and then to like Christ. If you are there somewhere mediocre, Satan knows very well to simply toss you out. Because you haven't grown up to the full potential. From milk you haven't gone to the strong meat. You will easily fall off in the journeys of this life. As the categories of 1, 2, 3 and 4, the sowing of the seed, the first category, many people are residing. Second category, ample are residing. No growth because they have stony soil. The third category, thorns and thistles. Many have fallen for the cares of this life. The good part, the fourth soil, are very, very few. And to become the complete cooked good food after raw materials being bought to chop off cooking, and then giving thanks to God the Father. That's what God the Father would confess your name before the will. God the Son will confess your name before God the Father. Revelation chapter 3. He give thanks on your behalf. Yada. And then since you give thanks on your behalf, what does he do now? He goes to say in simple words, you can have your food because you're well cooked, well prepared to meet the Lord God. After cooking, giving thanks is what you have been well prepared to be a witness for Lord God. You are well prepared to have your energy now. You are well prepared to become the will of Lord God the Father now. And if you haven't been well prepared to become the will of Lord God the Father, let Lord God help you out.
because being not well prepared to the marvelous glory of his will, we die in our to death. So dear brother, think over these issues. Life is too short and the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. The very first thing what you do, fear the commandments of the Lord our God. Fearing his commandments is to serve him. You are qualified to serve him. Serving him in the manner that is well pleasing to God the Father, you are cleaving unto him. You are becoming a desmios, prisoner to the Lord. And since you are going to become a desmios, prisoner to the Lord of a God, you are going to swear by his name. What a great opportunity for you to call upon the name of Lord God. And Lord God the Father answers them by to call him in truth and in spirit. By knowing his commandments, by doing according to his will and performing according to his glory. To them alone he answers them back because you have been cleaved unto him, because you have been serving in the Sharath responsibility to the Lord, because you are fearing that the name of my Lord God shall not be blasphemed on this earth, even by the minute iota or carrera, that which shall not be left over or not been taught on this earth. Such a great principle is the duty of every pastor teacher on this earth. And if your people are still not obeying to the word of Lord God, then let Lord God help you. Because when you cry out at the judgment seat of Christ, saying, God, God, Matthew 7 or Luke chapter 13, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this? He says, because of iniquity, depart from me, because you haven't done the will of Lord God the Father. And what is the will of God the Father? First, first Timothy chapter 2 in verse number 4. None to be perished, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. So dear brethren, think over these issues. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Ghost would lead us to the praise of his glory in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head, bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In audible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for so very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Everything you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry Sothon Logan. Herald the word in season out of sin because the Dharma from my witnesses where they have been called. The number one Dharma from my witnesses in Wellington Iti, for the Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not very besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in each and every nick and corner of the face of the earth to glorify and to honor Him through His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious Word of God. Serving such sort of a true Lord of a God where He said, Every part of the earth shall be filled with the glory of Lord God. And He swore by Himself that the earth shall be filled with such pale wonders of marvelous glory than how it is we are still able not to serve him, to make him to be our praise, to make him to do, make known to the world his great and terrible things, the things which our eyes have tasted, as Simon goes to give a testimony in Luke chapter 2, the things pertaining to the word of Lord God, when we are acquainted with that, we shall be a testimony, because he says, come and test and see that the word of Lord God, having to test his word of Lord God, you will come back to realize and to understand that what a great and terrible things God the Father has done for us. Therefore you go to describe his praise. How we are going to describe his praise, the Hebrew word called to be halal, the tehillah, 8416, strong code number. What it is, you are going to shine in your body. How we are going to make it up to be your praise? When you are making up your life to be a great expression of joy in your body, that you are his disciple. That is what your great praise will be, that you are his disciple. That expression of great joy in your body is how he says, you are his disciple. So dear brethren, 
think over these issues and then come back and understand what great things God the Father has done. Gadol went to say what a great erected of structure as disciples in every thought it is showed to them. And what a terrible thing meant to say. The way how we have known the commandments of the Lord of our God, you are going to fulfill them no matter what, whether they may be here or so for years. For years. You simply come to teach the truth because you are called to destroy your enemy under your feet. By that we meant to say any false thing, any high knowledge that goes against the word of Lord God, tell these people to wake up and realize truth is found in the Bible. Truth is found in the original languages of the scriptures. Truth is found, our life is found in the word of God. Negligence of carrying our cross and becoming the disciples of the word of Lord God is what our own misery and death is. Rather than walking at the death beat of the march of Satan, wake up to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and to perform the pale wonders of his marvelous birthday. So dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short, yet the responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large. So which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinite, divine, Holy Father, being thankful for this potential, for this energy which you have given for us to know the word. Without thy word, O Lord, we don't have anything else on this earth to cherish or nourish. Having given this word, O Lord, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us, and to make known to the world your great and terrible things which the people haven't known at the cost of not using to the full potential, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, mentoring them, leading them, and guiding them to the praise of your glory in your grace. So, Father, help us to show forth, shine forth the tahila, a great expression of joy in our body that we are your disciples. Help us to learn that. Help us to know that so that, dear brother, so that we could make this dear brethren to understand this great pile of wonders of your life through your word. To section, Father, we pray that the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.